The Disappearance of Marvin Lee Judy from Norway. On Saturday, August the 26th, 2017, Marvin Lee Judy from South Carolina checked out of Rosendale Ford Hotel in the little town of Rosendale, Norway. Before he was to return to the United States, he had told locals that he wanted to go see a famous waterfowl just, just up the valley. Nobody has seen him since he checked out. He was first reported missing by his family three weeks after he was last seen. A search, a search began with drones, search dogs, and rescue teams across the valley area. Local hikers were asked to check signature books on popular hiking spots to see if he had signed in anywhere and to keep an eye out for Marvin. His rental car was found in the parking lot of a local church which many of the locals find odd since the church is located three kilometers in the opposite direction. Locals also find it odd that he took locals also find it odd that it took the family three weeks to report him missing when he was supposed to fly back to the United States on the evening of the twenty sixth and twenty seventh. The search was eventually canceled, and now he is presumed dead. Well, this is just a an opinion right here about the family reporting him missing. Um, where was his family? Were they in South Carolina, or did he live there and um, didn't live around them? Maybe they were trying to get in touch with him, and they just... Didn't know if maybe he had extended his vacation or if he had gone on some kind of hiking trip. And maybe they didn't want to report him missing. Or maybe, being that they were in the United States and this was taking place in Norway, maybe it was just a communication problem. Maybe they had been trying to call somebody to find out his whereabouts. So, I have thought a lot about Marvin recently, wondering what could have happened to him. People here still talk about him and wonder what may have happened. I hope that one day his family might get some answers. He was 56 years old at the time that he went missing. He was 5'11 and weighed 230 pounds. He was Caucasian. His last date of known contact was August the 18th. However, in the other article that I read... It said that he con he checked out of his hotel on the 26th. So maybe his last contact with his family was the 18th. His location, now it's saying here that his location was Charleston, South Carolina. So do they believe that he returned? I mean, wouldn't his passport have shown if he had gotten on a plane? and returned back to the United States? Would he not have been seen on cameras at the airport? The victim traveled to Norway alone for a vacation. He was set to return on the 28th, and he did not do so. His rental car and all of his belongings were located at his hotel. Now, in the other article, it said that it was located three kilometers away in the opposite direction of these waterfalls that he was wanting to go see. Could it be possible that he was traveling and got turned around and pulled into this parking lot of this church to maybe look at a map or something and something happened to him there? Or maybe he got out of his car and went to walk around. Maybe he was going to take some pictures or something. And the investigating agency is Charleston, South Carolina De uh, Police Department, Charleston Police Department, um, 843 There's really nothing else about him on here. So I'm just going to move on to the next story that I have pulled up. 
This is another case that is not local to me, but it is from South Carolina. John DuBose, 44, missing in Lee County. This is dated January the 3rd, 2022. John DuBose was a 44-year-old mentally challenged man. I'm not seeing any updates to indicate that he's been found, so I'm going to continue reading on with this story. John DuBose was last seen in the 1800 block of Hubby Kelly Road the weekend of December the 28th, I'm assuming 2021. The Lee County Sheriff's Department said DuBose has a men dementish, diminished mental capacity and has been known to catch rides in the Sumter area. If you've seen Mr. DuBose, please contact the Lee County Sheriff's Office. January 18th, 2022. A Lee County man known to have brain damage has been missing since Christmas and his family is worried for his safety. The Lee County Sheriff's Office posted a missing person report on December the 28th, 2021 for 44-year-old John DeBose. He was last seen Christmas Day in the area of Hub Kelly Road. Donna Burkett, his mother, said he was a resident at a long-term care facility. She had brought him to her daughter's home in Bishopville for the holidays, but he left the house shortly after they arrived. There have been no sightings of him since. Normally, when he takes off like this, we can find him within a few hours. The police will pick him up walking, but nobody has said that they've seen him at this time. I'm afraid that he made it to the truck stop coming out of Bishopville and maybe got a ride with the truck driver. Well, I would check those cameras at that truck stop and maybe along that area there has to be cameras. Um, and the trucks, a lot of the trucks have cameras on them now too. If they saw someone walking along the roadway, they might, you know, of course, it's been two years ago, so. John DuBose, um, there's really nothing. It's There's very, very little about this man. The Strange Disappearance of Christopher Carlton Tompkins. So I'm just going to read from this page and, and give the details of what it has here. Christopher Carlton Tompkins was born December the 28th, 1981, described as a happy, outgoing, and hardworking individual. 20-year-old Christopher was also a devout Christian who lived with his mother, Anne, in Georgia. He worked for a surveying company as part of a four-man crew, a job he enjoyed. On the day he vanished, January the 25th, 2002, Christopher showed up for work at 8 o'clock in the morning and rode with a co-worker to their job site in a wooded area near the County Line Road in Harris County, Georgia. Chris and three other surveyors were working in a line formation, spaced roughly 50 feet apart. The men stopped for a lunch break, and then at around 1.30 p.m., they went back to work. One of the surveyors was in the middle of a conversation with, with Chris when he looked away for just a minute, and when he turned his head back around, Christopher was gone. His tools were still on the ground right where he had been standing, but he was not there. None of his co-workers had seen or heard anything strange. They assumed he had simply walked into the woods to relieve himself, but the other man said he would not have had time to walk far enough away to get out of his line of vision. So he just turned around for a few seconds and looks back and this guy's gone. Well, this was their story. This was their statement. Um, after several minutes, Christopher did not come back. They, they began to look for him. They found nothing. One of the surveyors found his wife to tell her that Christopher was missing, and they couldn't find him anywhere. Strangely, however, Christopher's mother was informed that her son was missing until 4.15 p.m. Well, I wouldn't say that that's strange. 
They probably just thought maybe he just snuck off or maybe he went and hid somewhere to get out of work or, you know, something so unusual and odd for somebody to just be in the middle of their work and their co-worker who's 50 feet away from them turns back around and they're not there. And so maybe they just did not want to worry the mother. They probably thought, let's not call her until quitting time. And if he doesn't turn up at the end of the day, then we're going to have to let people know what's going on. And they were probably so, like, confused. Or were they? You know, that is coming up. Christopher Tompkins was reported missing and the official investigation into his disappearance began. The police found a boot hanging from the top of a barbed wire fence in a wooded area where Christopher was last seen. It was confirmed to be his boot. On the same fence, they discovered a blue thread believed to have come from Christopher's paints. Some sources report that the paints were also found, but this is not, this is not clear. They, didn't, they don't know if that's, they found the whole pair of paints or just some threads. They also found coins laying on the ground that they believed had been Christopher's. No blood or signs of a struggle were found. Without any forensic evidence or eyewitness reports, the investigation hit a standstill. However, six months later, his other boot was found by a farmer on private property less than a mile away. Nothing else belonging to Christopher has ever been discovered. In the absence of direct evidence of foul play or any other explanation, such as an animal attack or an accident, the authorities eventually had to close the case, coming to the rather puzzling conclusion that Christopher had simply walked away to start a new life. I don't think so. Um, if he were going to walk away and start a new life, he would probably would have not shown up for his shift that morning. Or maybe he did, just to throw everybody off. Um, while they were all sitting there eating their lunch, why didn't he just say, I have to go relieve myself and then head on out? And why did he leave his paints and boots behind, or at least his boot? Um, doesn't make any sense. When somebody is going to go start a new life, which people rarely do, I've talked about this, you do have a few people like that. If they have just left a very horrible relationship or they are, you know, maybe they're in deep debt or they're in some kind of legal trouble, then they might try to disappear for a while and usually they turn up somewhere. Then you have a few that go into witness protection, but that's rare as well. And people... Mostly people don't just go off to start a new life. And if they're going to, they don't do it in this way. He would have waited till he worked that week out and got his paycheck. You know? Who just starts a new life like that out of the blue? Just woof. His fellow surveyors have never been investigated. Though one of them did hire a lawyer immediately after Christopher went missing. Neither their identities nor the name of the surveying company has ever been released to the public. However, his mother knew and worked as a babysitter for the owner of the company. Additionally, one of the surveyors was convicted of an unrelated violent crime and given a long prison sentence just months after Christopher's disappearance. Well, is it possible that these other workers did something to this man and covered it up to cover for each other and maybe they were all afraid of that one worker and he threatened them maybe he made an example out of this guy to tell the others if you say anything the same thing will happen to you but so it's possible that one of them did something to him and just hid it from the other two Maybe came back that night after everyone had gone home, but wouldn't people have been out there searching by then? I don't know. It doesn't say what the man was convicted of, just an unrelated violent crime.
Christopher's boss reportedly said that he had been acting strangely leading up to his disappearance. However, he did not elaborate on this statement. Anne refuted this assertion about her son's behavior, saying that Chris lived with me and I saw him every day, and there was no strange behavior, there was no distress, there was nothing out of the ordinary. She went on to say that she believed Christopher was a victim of foul play and that his co-workers knew more than they told investigators. Well, that's really the only thing here that makes sense. You know? Was it one of those left-behind situations or what, you know? Given its association with the controversial missing 411 in which people have mysteriously vanished in the wilderness, a number of bizarre theories have risen up, including alien abduction, Bigfoot. I don't think it was an alien abduction, and I don't think it was Bigfoot. Um, I think, more than likely, something took place that day between the workers, and it was either between him and one other worker, or all three of them jumped onto him for some reason, or one did, and the other two helped cover it up. I don't know. And I could be wrong, and I don't want to falsely accuse anybody, but it's just too unusual but then again, sadly, Christopher's case is no longer being actively investigated. There have been no further developments. But his remaining family and friends, as well as those close to the case, hope to one day have answers about what happened to him. I would wonder if there was like a body of water nearby there, where his body may have been hidden what else they may say about him. Chime in. What do you think happened to Christopher? A. He ran off to start a new life. B. He was the victim of foul play and his co-workers knew about it. C. He was attacked or abducted by a, a Bigfoot or some other alien type thing. I say B. I think something either happened to him that morning and he was never at that job site. And they just made up this whole story. Or he was at the job site and during the lunch break somebody said something the wrong way. Somebody took something the wrong way. And a fight broke out. Maybe they did it on purpose or maybe he was just injured beyond, you know, that they didn't intend. But I don't think he was abducted. Christopher was a black male. His date of birth was December the 28th, 1981. He was 20 years old. He was 5 foot 7 to 5 foot 9 and weighed around 140 pounds. He was last seen wearing a black shirt, a blue and gray plaid jacket with a gray hood, navy blue dicky work paints, tan work boots, a black skull cap, and a black watch. Christopher had black hair and brown eyes. His hair was braided at the time that he went missing. He may have a mustache or a goatee. He has a tattoo on his right arm of an ice cream cone with the name Chris written in vertical letters. Um, Christopher worked as a surveyor when he disappeared. He was a devout Christian who was well liked by everyone in the community. Um, he left the home that morning to head to work at 8 a.m., parked his car at the company office, and rode to the job site with a co-worker. So did anyone else see him arrive at work that morning? 2002, I would assume that they may have had cameras, I don't know. Did anyone, did, did, you know, did the people come inside and clock in, that type of thing? I don't know. I would just wonder if anybody else at the company saw him come to work and show up, show up and get out of his car. Uh, it just goes on to tell more about the lunch break and 
one of the men began a conversation with Christopher, and when he when he turned, he waited for Christopher to respond, and when he did, and he says he turned around and he wasn't there. The man who talked to Christopher said he called out his name several times, looking around the area to see where he may have gone. He then hollered out to the other men and alerted them and asked them had they seen Christopher, and they said no. They all went walking around looking to see where he may have gone. That was when they found his work boot hanging in the barbed wire fence. So it sounds like maybe they want to, like, say maybe something came out of the woods. How close was he to the barbed wire fence? It doesn't say. It says the men were 50 feet apart in formation, a line formation. Was he near a wooded area? Is it possible a bar or something grabbed him and pulled him? But wouldn't they have heard him scream? Wouldn't they have heard noises screaming for help? Wouldn't they have heard, wouldn't they have later found parts of his body or his clothing? So I don't know that that's, you know. Men say they called 911 and were told by the police that they had to wait 24 hours to file a missing person report. Um, police then later searched the area for the man and found his work Well, this, are, this story says they found his work paints. The one I read prior to this said they found some thread from his work paints and some loose coins laying on the ground. A farmer found his boot later in a swampy part of his land around 900 yards from where Christopher vanished. Police closed the case saying Christopher left to start a new life. I hate it when they say that and I wish that the, the protocol would change for police officers to, can, to form that opinion. Did they look into his background to see if he had withdrawn all of his savings, if he had any? Did they look into his background to see if he was in any kind of legal trouble? Was he in any kind of financial trouble, trouble with a, a girlfriend, or uh, did he have children with someone? Was he fighting for custody or child support? Uh, did he have an ex who maybe had a new man who he, he might have been having trouble with? It seemed like he liked his job because he showed up for work that morning. And if he was going to run off to start a new life instead of pulling into the parking lot of that job that morning, he probably would have just kept on driving. So I, I just hate it when they conclude that. That's my personal opinion. There probably are some that do attempt to leave and start a new life. But their social security number is eventually going to be used when they apply for an apartment or a job. You know? After turning up no clues or evidence, police determined Christopher had just left on his own. The mother does not agree with that. And I don't see much else about this case, so I'm going to wrap it up and just say, as of today, this case is unsolved. They're not investigating it, and unless remains turn up later, or unless someone comes forward and says, I know what happened, they're not going to reopen it. They, they consider it a, a cold, closed case, or a, a closed case. And the mother doesn't agree with that, and I don't either. He would now be 41 years old, and surely if he had left to start a new life, whatever things had happened in his life that might have led him to that decision, he would have solved those and been able to reach out to his family. So I just don't buy it. Thanks for watching.